Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a medical product, electrocardiograph. So cardio means heart. So this one is doing heart curse. And as you can see, it has been in use uh, by Danish nurses who didn't really uh, wanted the difficult menu system, so they added menus of their own to make it faster and easier to use. So that's pretty cool. They even added a little note up here that says that the printout is three pages. So yes, there is definitely also a thermal printer in this unit. That's actually quite impressive because it's not that big. And here we can see the model number and the manufacturer name and all that kind of stuff and here see this little logo factory 2010 and since this is a medical product of course you need to see service and next service is 2012 and then i had some other labels here but it's more or less the same kind of age so probably something was wrong with this or it couldn't be serviced, or they got some newer or better models. But then somebody threw this in the trash bin. Like, yeah, definitely throwing. Look at all the deep, deep scratches and stuff like that. And also, they forgot to throw out the probe. So here is the, the hard probe. And you need to have exactly the right probe. Because this cable goes to some small amplifiers and connectors for the pickup probes. So that means I'm probably not going to get any kind of signals or probes or anything on the display in case this one actually does power up. There's an SD card here, the old type, the large SD card for your curves storage. And then there is a USB stick, um, probably for transferring the pictures and there's probably also there was maybe another one yes definitely say completely broken and this one has been used so many times it's completely trashed as well so that is definitely what happens from daily use you stick in your usb and then it breaks and then yeah okay unit is just trashed it's probably yeah okay quite easy to open so we're going to do that but hey how about we just power it up and see if it's alive right so let's see what happens mains is applied we got some lights Ooh, that looks like there's a battery in here let's see it looks like this is charge the charge icon let me try and dim the light a little bit here it's using eight watts 15, 14, oh no, no SD card, but it looks like it's alive, it's definitely scanning some stuff, can you do, okay, this is how you do it, but the glass here is broken, but that is just a protective glass, but still we can actually see the, the curves, that is pretty cool, what else can we do, next page, so we can change the millivolt we can say can we print oh oh yeah look at that it is printing how beautiful is that oh and then it prints some more pages Oh, we got three pages. One, two, three. Also got some analyze kind of thing here, right? What? Date is right. How is that possible? Time's almost right. Only a half an hour off. Oh, 
How cool is that? I'm definitely going to play with uh, connecting something to that connector. I must say I give up uh, giving any kind of response to any of the many, many traces here. I've tried all combinations on this uh, sensor interface. I've been using my multimeter here in ohm mode and in connectivity mode and actually gives quite a lot of voltage and current and kind of stuff and then testing all the different combinations here in this uh, DB15 and there's definitely no response whatsoever. Of course I expect this to be completely isolated and all that kind of stuff and that is why I've tried all sorts of combinations. Maybe I didn't pick the right one or maybe I skipped, I don't know, something. So far I don't understand. Uh, I think maybe this interface is uh, completely dead. I once thought when I plugged this in and out, I saw a tiny little response on one of the traces. So I had the idea, ooh, maybe it's alive. Maybe there's like an analog interface here that I could kind of access because that could be super cool. But so far, uh, no such luck. Oh, that was funny. Inside this corner. There's a battery, so that is definitely. Oh yeah, wow, that is a cute battery pack. But of course this is <laughs> many, many years old. So I may not be able to save that, but it could be fun to try and to see if that one works. So that was the hidden screw, okay. And as always, medical equipment is just so beautifully made inside. I know it. So that is oh. So that's the thermal printer. The only moving part there is here is just this paper feeder. It's just gonna feed the paper, and then the thermal stuff happens in here. I think it's super super fascinating about how it can heat up all those tiny pixels that fast heating up and cooling down again it's just something i keep finding <laughs> amazing so we got some quite a lot of pcbs too or even more right yeah there's more and some really cute isolation transformers because everything here is of course isolated see all this data optical and data link here and then power supply optical or uh, transformer and that is the cable for the entire front panel so the front pan panel consists of yeah of course the, the buttons and uh, and then the screen and all that goes via this cable so we can just take this away so that is how that is made really really well made with all the cables like that super super clean construction and i mean this reveals that somebody thought about it maybe there's a no, there's not a processor or anything here, right? It's very, very flat. And all the data lines for the display just goes like that. It's probably a little power supply here. See, even the cable for the speaker and that is the backlight. Just amazing. Perfect, perfect design. And this is, of course, for static uh, discharge of this metal. So when you're going and touching stuff the discharge must of course go directly to metal big fat metal all the way around for proper static discharge protection again perfectly correctly designed i really want to have a look in here oh we need to go from the bottom right so we can take some screws from the top and then some other screws from the bottom Okay.
can't wait to inspect this analog interface. Look at the isolation, because this is in direct contact with the heart region of a patient. So I'm telling you, the isolation demand from this to chassis and to everything is just intense. One of the USB connectors broke off and is completely lost in here. But the other one, see, that was serviced. So that's the USB bridge. And even that. Ah, so this is the USB port. And then it goes into serial slow mo stuff and a little slow mo processor for SD card handling. This is not. Oh, yes, there is an FPGA. Nasty, nasty stuff here, huh? Spartan, yes, exactly. Some silent uh, power power, huh? Oh, yeah. And what is that? Oh, yeah, that's the stepper motor driver for that one. Exactly. That is a little bit strange. I did not expect to see that. See, one cable from the thermal printer goes to that board, and then the other goes to the top. How is that? <laughs> that is a little bit funny. So that is the other board here, the power supply. And it was mounted like, like this. It's uh, neatly done. And down here you see that is the flyback fed and that is the rectifier diode. So it's a single output switch mode converter as far as I can see by those two windings. So that's the output and then we measure the voltage and then up to a couple of feet back to the primary side and that's kind of more or less what there is to it. And then here's the battery with the battery charger and stuff like that. And uh, okay, so that's some more parts for for the, the printer interface is, uh, is here. That is a little bit weird. Okay, some filter power stuff. Some more power supplies. Well, well, let's look at the other side of the power supply. I also design electronics for production in all sorts of levels of uh, volume. So I really love it when I see stuff like this being made like this. So this is the diode holder and there was a similar one for the field effect transistor. But look at the mechanical construction here insanely simple and it just fix, fits in here see click the click and it's self holding self centering stuff and then you just put in one screw there's no nuts there's no nothing to uh to do wrong here and then there's this isolation and stuff it's just fast simple effective and you cannot do it wrong that is definitely what you want to do in uh, production every second count you want to make as many as possible of whatever it is you're doing and you want to avoid errors and this is the bottom side of the power supply and see there was a little power supply regulator IC and this is the one that is handling the PWM and all that kind of stuff for the for the flyback so they are most likely just called a offline flyback controller and then the optocoupler and therefore 3 1 for voltage regulation and all that kind of stuff got quite a lot of uh, transistors here probably for enabling different uh, voltages and such so yeah a beautiful uh, power supply now I want to have a little deeper look. 
So this is the analog interface for direct human contact. And what we see here is actually quite interesting. All those amplifiers, super high gain, super low speed, filtering and all sorts of stuff. ESD protection, high series resistors for good isolation and all that kind of stuff. And uh, see, all this here is connected to a guard. I don't know if it's easy to see, but that is the back plane here. And that is the reference also to the human body, right? And that's the rest of the inputs. And then here's a tiny little processor that gets all the analog signals in. And then it signals this via a serial protocol via this isolator part. And then there's, of course, a power supply here. And then rectifiers and some regulators for super isolation of this entire analog interface. So that is how they did that. There's not a lot on the back side. I actually thought we would have another board in here, but that is, of course, not the case. All this space here, that is for the paper. That is actually what I would assume, right? So if I open here, yeah. Oh my gosh, what do you know? The paper is, <laughs> that is sexy. What are you, what do you know? This is thermal paper. Wow. Like that. Oh, and you always get those funky fingers. When you touch this, uh, there's just some, some kind of, I don't know how to explain you this, but you get really, really dry and funny fingers from uh, touching this kind of paper. I, I really actually hate to touch this. Yikes, that is disgusting. Disgusting. So yeah, this is how it works and this is the thermal part of it. I don't know if I can show you this really, but there is nothing to see other than some tiny, tiny thermal elements. And the paper just goes straight through here and then is pressed up by this rubber roller here. Ah, so there's a, yeah, yeah, see, those springs, oh, that, those are tough, there's a lot of tension going on here, really, yeah, so this is the thermal tension to, yeah, whatever, it's nice and, uh, Is something I didn't expect that. I thought that would be like a real. But yeah, that is what is inside this fascinating unit. Just too bad there is no response on this analog interface, so it's probably blown up. They really tried to repair everything here and get it up and running, and then there's just no response. No combinations, no nothing what I do. I, I get absolutely zero response. So of course there's no data here or somehow this is blown up or maybe there's a missing voltage. Uh, yeah, what can I do about it? I can't use this for anything. Actually, the only thing I wanted to show you guys was all the stuff it contains and how beautiful it was made. So... Thank you very much for watching. See you soon again.